this is what I want to ask you guys for real. All right. Here's the real question. What free spirit do you operate in? I want to see what y'all are thinking when y'all hear that. What free spirit are you operating in yourself? And I'm going to break down what a free spirit is in a minute. Because when you hear that word free spirit, you, you think of somebody that's detached from, you know, something. Because the word free means to be mm -hmm. detached from something. So I'm going to say this. And when you, when there's, there's two spirits that we all operate in. We're either operating in the Holy Spirit or operating in the spirit of the Antichrist because the Bible says the spirit of the Antichrist is already moving amongst us. And that's why we have these carnal thoughts. That's why we, we anything that goes against or is contrary to the word of God, that's Antichrist. It's not necessarily a particular person, but it's the spirit of the Antichrist. It's a spirit of against God. It's the spirit of I'm going to be in sin. It's remaining in sin. So anything that's contrary to the word of God or contrary to God's spirit is anti-Christ or anti-God. So uh, here I'm going to break down what free spirit is. So definition of free spirit is a independent or uninhibited person. So when you think of the word independent, you're saying you're independent from God if you're calling yourself a free spirit. Now, there is two types of free spirits, and I'm going to get into that because when, a, when you're, and I'm going to break it down later on, and y'all got to understand, but when you're independent of God, you're telling yourself, you're saying that, uh, that God has no place in your life to be God or, or show you or taste and see that he's good in your life. You're allowing the world or yourself to be God of your own life. When you say you're a free spirited person. Now here, here we're going to break down, break it, really break it down. The, by definition, independent means free from outside control, not depending on another's authority. So you're telling God, I, I don't depend on your authority and I'm free from you. When you say I'm a free spirited person. Now a un, in, now here or it, here's the next per definition of free spirit or uninhibited person. So uninhibited means expressing one's feelings or thoughts un, un, uh, unselfishly or un, uh, self-consciously and without restraint. So you're voicing your thoughts, your opinion, you're exalting your thoughts, your ways above God's ways, and you're allowing those thoughts to dictate how you feel, how you live your life and the lifestyle that you're making. So be careful when you say you're a free spirit, because a lot of people that say they're a free spirit, they're deep thinkers. They're usually deep thinkers for one. They're people that are, uh, you know, nothing wrong with deep thinking, but when you're outside the realm of God's authority and outside the realm of God's law, that's when it becomes a problem. All right. So, when you act as a free spirit, you continue, you usually are led by a antichrist type of spirit. Now there is the Holy spirit, which we are, which we, you could be a free spirit for the Holy spirit. I'm going to explain how, when, when God said to us what, that we're no longer bound to sin, we're not bound to sin when we receive the Holy ghost. So we are free. We're a free spirit from that sin, but we're not independent from God because our dependence be, is based on God. So we're not independent of God. So here, here's what I want to say here. Uh, I want to read Galatians 5, 16 through 18. It says, This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. So it's saying right there, the spirit and the flesh already contradict or are contrary to each other right there. So if you're walking in a antichrist spirit, you're walking in the fleshly, in the flesh. And if you're walking in the Holy Ghost or led by the spirit, you're walking uh, in the spirit. All right. So, and, it's, and it continues, and these are contrary the one to the other. So ye cannot do the things that ye would but if ye be led by the Spirit, 
you are not under the law. So you are not under the law of sin and condemnation when you have the spirit of the Holy Ghost. So that's why it's that's why you're free from your free spirit in that sense, but you're still bound to God. Now, here's one thing I want to ask you. What do y'all think about the word slavery? Does it offend you? How do you feel about that word slavery? I want to see y'all's thoughts. Hmm. Hmm. I'd say it depends on the context. All right. Uh, go ahead. Explain. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. Okay. Uh, elaborate. I say, well, I would say like this. If you, like the word in and of itself right. may not mean anything. If, let's put it this way, if someone in the, if someone in the U.S. was tr I'm trying to say all black people should go back to slavery, then it's like, oh, all right, I feel a little type of way about that. Right. But on the offset of, if you're talking about it from a historical aspect of where pretty much everyone was using slaves, I think, you know, at that, at that point in time, it is what it is. You can't go back to change that. You can only go forward to change that. Right. Um, that's at least from a from a worldly aspect of it. I don't know what you mean from a spiritual one. Okay. So in a spiritual aspect, you're a slave to something. All right. <laughs> and this is this is what uh, a lot of people don't really understand because they think when they get saved by God that they're free to do whatever they want. They like, okay, God could mm -hmm. just forgive me just because you know He's gonna forgive you. Excuse me. But here's the thing. God will also allow you to face a punishment if you are not, if you're, li if you're living and staying in that sin. And you could be a slave to sin or you could be a slave to God and his righteousness. And I'm about to go into that a little bit more because a lot of people don't understand that we are a slave to something. But who? what are you a slave to? That's the question. Are you a slave hey, to... Uh, before you dive into that a little bit further, I right. do have a question that came to me. Right. Go ahead. So um, I understand your definition of free, of free spirit. Right. I would say, I would pose this question to you. What's the mm -hmm. difference between a free spirit and acting a free will? Okay. So free will... It, okay. And, uh -huh. uh, I was going to say because in and of itself... I tend to correlate the two to a, to a certain extent in the same sense that we are free to choose whether or yeah. not to follow God. Exactly. And that, that's exactly what uh, you could, you can actually correlate that because when you are, when you, cause you always have free will cause God's not going to force you to do what he's, he's not going to force you to do anything. All right. Mm -hmm. So you have that free will to choose, uh, to serve him even if you're a, a, a christian and you say you've given your life to christ and say you backslide and you keep backsliding that's by your choice so you do have that choice but you also have the choice to repent and turn from your ways so being a free spirit uh, by his word uh for him is you're you're free from from sin and condemnation if you're walking in the spirit if you are being led by the spirit all right mm -hmm. now if you're not being led by the spirit you're going to stay in that sin all right now free will is you have that choice to make that decision because you have a decision on everything in your life it's just how are you going to respond when x y and z is thrown at you mm -hmm. so is that making sense so far any questions so far on that or am I no, that doesn't make sense. Okay. So I guess a follow-up would be, would you then consider your spirit not free if you were giving it to God? Because mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of right. how I, that's kind of how I've seen it. It's like, you're either, you're either in the world or you're of God. It's not one of the two. So exactly. whenever I hear free spirit, I'm seeing, I think, you know, none against people that have done it, but I think burning man when I think free spirit. Yeah, you think Thank Burning Man? <laughs> I think Burning Man. Don't get me wrong. I wanted to go at one point in time. Right. Now I'm kind of like, eh, I, I'm not. I'm not about it. Right. Not, but, but now it's like I look at it as okay. I've given my life to Christ, therefore I can't be doing right 
every, I can't be doing the doing the dirt that I was doing before. I can't no, be you, you can't living the same way that I was before. So exactly. Like in I, that same sense, I don't really see my. Hmm, I guess I'm kind of blurring the line between saying instead of giving, I'm giving my spirit back to God versus right. I'm giving up that free will because at the same time it's like the free will and I see where you're coming from with it. The free right. will in and of itself is still my decisions that right. I choose to make versus mm -hmm. the spirit, which either mm -hmm. condemns or saves me once given to Christ. Right. And you always have free will. That's, that's, that's point blank. Now, when you do give your life to Christ, there is a standard that we're supposed to, the standards are to, live holy a holy life a live a righteous life and mm -hmm. walk in the spirit and being led by the spirit to fulfill the will that he has for our life and to serve jesus christ that's that's what he wishes for us he does not wish you know anything else but that because that's what we were truly designed for but he's not going to force you to do something that's you no know, you know that's not that you don't want to do it is you have that choice which is where the free will comes from the free will in the spirit is what I'm talking about is you're free from that sin when you do walk in the spirit because you, Jesus died on the cross for our, our sins, right? So when he died on the cross for our sins, he gave us back our rightful place and access to the father. When uh, Adam and Eve had failed in the garden, they gave their, their birthrights you could say to the devil. That's why the devil's, this is the world is the devil's playground. But when Jesus came back and fulfilled the law, he, he gave us back that birthright and he gave us a comforter and a guide, which is the Holy spirit. So we are led into walking in the spirit. So I, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> no, it does. It, I see it more now as, I'm about Back to get your into question. that. It's more, more and more. Yeah. It's more like a, I was, I was going to say, it's more like a play on words, like the right. free will. I'm mean not free will, free spirit versus free spirit being in the sense of being free from sin. Right. And I'm actually about okay. to go into that even more because it's funny because I'm like, oh man, he, he doesn't know what I'm about to hit him with now. <laughs> but yeah, you, I'm about to get to your point because uh, it's going to be coming out of Romans 6, 1 through 12. So, Get ready because this is quite a read. It's a pretty long read. So, so I'm going to read now Romans 6, 1 through 12. What shall we say then? All right. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. So right there, it's already telling you. So I already gave my life to you. but And, and I know you give us grace. But God forbids that. Like, he, he, shun, he shuns the idea of you turning back to your sin because we're supposed to be dead from sin so let me continue how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein so it's saying why are we why are you gonna live in sin when you already turned away from that you're the that old person that old you should be dead so turn from that sin and strive and pray for that self-control or whatever you need to uh, pray for to fight against uh what you're struggling with uh, me personally, as you already know, I, I always tell people this because I'm, I'm transparent because the Lord has uh, helped me become more transparent in this area. So when it comes to, uh, oh, you came back. So when it comes to uh, living in sin, all right, what I struggled with was I struggled with lust issues with women or women, period. So I realized, I said, okay, Lord, I can't be living like that because I serve you and I know this is not right. So now what I have to do, I have to find it in myself to get right with you and to seek a higher calling. People say, live how you want, do what you want. That's the free spirited mentality if you're living of the world. Remember, God said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind and not to conform to the ways of the world. When you're conforming to the ways of the world and you have that that uh, that antichrist mindset or that I live how I want to live mindset, you're operating against and against God, which is contrary to the spirit, which is the flesh. There's a thing uh, that they say: the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. 
so when you have those things, you know, this, this is all contrary to how God wants you to live. All right. Let me continue. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Christ. So when you were baptized in Christ, when you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you receive the Holy Ghost, you're supposed to be dead to these things. So right here, so many of us were baptized into Christ Jesus. But know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. So it's saying here, when Jesus died, because he died perfect, right? We died with him when we gave our life to him. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. John, how about you? Yeah, I'm in the room. All right. Yeah, I'm in the room. Sorry, I got my thing on mute. No worries. I'm eating salad, so I don't, I'm pretty sure you don't want to hear that crunching in your ears. Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not. But here we go. Uh, Therefore, we were buried with him by baptism into death. So when he died, we died when we gave up, when we gave up that old man, we, we gave our life to him. So that's what that's saying there. Therefore, we were buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ we ra we as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the father even so we would uh, also should walk in the newness of life like i said have that renewing of the mind be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind when you have that renewing of the mind and you're putting the lord first he's going to teach you how to walk in the spirit and to live that life that Jesus Christ lived. It says in the word to be Christ-like, not world-like, not uh, free-spirited-like, not uh, how I feel like. <laughs> I like that one. Uh, or how, you know, how the expectations of others like. He's not saying that. He's saying be Christ-like. That's what he was saying in the word. So continuing, let me continue. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Did y'all catch that? So if we, once we gave our life to him and once he resurrected, we now have that access because he gave us the Holy Spirit. So we can now walk like he walked. We will stumble because we do have flesh and we will always have something to, to go on because we're not perfect but when we do backslide and we do fall we continue to ask the lord to help us in our in our wrong and help us in our backslidden nature if we do fall all right so here we go knowing this that our old man the old man which is our old self knowing this that the old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead and freed from sin, now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. All right. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. So that goes back to what I was saying about the sin and condemnation. Because when back then in the in the Old Testament, uh, sin and condemnation. When you sinned, you had to make a sacrifice to atone your sins. Now, since we have the Holy Spirit, we we have access, direct access to the Lord, and we pray and we ask for that forgiveness. That's where Jesus came in for with His grace and mercy, uh, so the Father could give us grace and mercy. So that's that was the point when Jesus had died to help us get through that sin and condemnation. That's what it's explaining. Let's see. Da, da, da. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we ought, we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. I'm, I'm just going back over it. Die, death hath no more dominion over him. I just wanted to reiterate on that so you guys could really meditate on that word right there. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. 
Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed in, unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies that ye obey in the, the lust thereof. So it's saying here, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies. He's saying don't stay in that sin. Don't be in that sin to where it's going to where you're going to be a slave to it. If you're going to be a free spirited person, you're going to be a slave to either God's will or a slave to the will of the of what you desire. You're going to be a slave to uh, sinful nature. You're going to be slave to what is in this world because we're supposed to be in this world, but we're not supposed to be of this world. When we're not supposed to be of this world, it's saying we're not supposed to conform to this world at all. That's why when we're, we're living for the Lord, we have that standard and to uphold his statutes, his commands, and to live a life that's in love. Because he said you could sum up the, the, this, his teachings in, in one thing, and that's to love your neighbor. So when you're loving, because it also says in the word, love covers a multitude of sin. When you're walking in the spirit, you're walking not only in the spirit, but you're walking in love because the spirit of God is love. And that's where people don't understand how deep this word could get. Because if you study the, the fruits of the spirit, the fruits of the spirit equates love. And when you really break down what love is, sincere love, which is why people don't recognize love when they see it nowadays, is because they don't understand the spirit of God. Very rarely do people experience that full love and know that love comes with correction. Love comes with patience. Love comes with kindness and goodness and joy. And love also comes with rebuke. When someone's in the wrong, think about a child that's being wrong at home. They get disciplined. That's the same thing that God does to us when we're out of character or out of line. God disciplines us because he loves us. That's love also disciplines as well. So this is why when you're walking in the spirit, you're also walking in love, which covers a multitude of sins. Are y'all getting that? Yeah, y'all getting that, right? Y'all y'all gotta have a see y'all 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 heard that thunder? Y'all heard that yeah. thunder? <laughs> y'all quiet down over here. The Lord got happy. He said, boom. <laughs> he heard you. Yeah. He's on this call. He is. I'm telling you, like, <laughs> I was actually surprised that I was going to rain because I did pray for rain. I'm like, Lord, you going to give us rain or not? Because, <laughs> man, it's hot. Uh, <laughs> it, man, it was like three yeah. three digits, man. I'm not playing. <laughs> yeah, I think it broke 105 today. Yeah. I'm like, uh-uh, Lord, we, we got to – we got to make this rain. <laughs> uh, let's see. So let me, okay. I just finished that scripture, but I, that's where I wanted to say, because I, I think y'all understand the difference between uh, a free spirited person that's walking on earth because versus a free spirited person that's walking in the spirit. Cause remember we're not, we're not of this world. Remember that we're in it, but we're not of it. Cause we're already True. dead. We're already dead. <laughs> when you when you're living for Christ, you're already dead. You know, you'll be persecuted the same way he got persecuted. You will be ridiculed like he got ridiculed. You're you. We don't live for this world. We live for the kingdom. We don't live for nothing else but Jesus Christ. And that's what we we need to understand. And when we do make mistakes, that's why we're called to repent. And repent means to turn away from your sins. Just turn away. You've done it, and you may stay in that sin for a while because it might be a, th a stronghold for you, but that's when you have to learn how to pray and fast against these things because only some things mm -hmm. come out by prayer and fasting. That's why the only way to really live this life, because this is where people go wrong, they don't, uh, they don't put their face in the Word of God, uh, but only on Sundays or Saturdays. And they're not doing this throughout the week. The more scripture, the more words you know, the the better you're going to be equipped to be in the world, uh, to to fight in the world in the spiritual realm against these things that come against you. Um, 
Lord, where are you trying to go, go with this? When, uh, okay, Lord. So here's, 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 here's something. When we are living in a way that's pleasing to God, right? And we are choosing to not be of this world. We're looking, we, we're going to be in a place where God could not only use us, but he's going to say, he's going to reveal things to you that uh, the mysteries of him that he's not going to show anybody else. This is why he says, my people are destroyed by, for a lack of knowledge. When you're not living in the word, you're not getting that knowledge to hear the mysteries from him that you need to hear. Because he said by that men not uh, lit, don't live by bread alone, but by every word that preceded out the mouth of the Lord. When you're not living by the word because you don't know the word, how can you live your life? Because you're not putting your, your mind, your focus into what the Lord has for you or what he's saying about his word. That's why a lot of people fight or clash because you have spirit and flesh crashing like this on palm people. So I did want to say that. Uh, I hope you guys, you know, got the message that I'm trying to convey. If y'all have any questions, let me know. Because this is, that was pretty much it that I had to say. I'm a, uh, Go ahead. Omega, how much time do you, how much time do you think you like spend with God per day? You know, like, Man, I, I want to, I want to add more time to my life. Like, today was like four hours. <laughs> oh my God. Today was literally four <laughs> hours with every me. day. Uh, I would say every day. I would say at least a minute. Me personally, it's at least two hours. Sunday to Saturday, it's, it's at least four hours. But it depends on the day. I try to, and if I can't do it like straight out, I do. I break it down into like segments. So start off, you know, start off with thirty minutes to maybe an hour, maybe even ten minutes. But slowly start to increase your time. Because God's looking for that time to be with you. Because the only way... Yeah, I need to spend more time. Mm -hmm. that, that's I, I, I don't read enough of the Bible, bro. Like, I listen to a lot of, like, you know, Christian music. I get into it. I, I like, I'll listen to the Bible verses, like, the, before bed. Like, you know how you can listen to those they say on YouTube? But right. I'm not necessarily taking in the information I should be when, like... Got you. Got you. I totally understand. Um, John, how about you? No, I did. But, I did understand what you're talking about. Uh, but for as far as as long as I spend, I do shoot for I do shoot for at least thirty minutes a day. It doesn't happen every day, right? Like, like especially now, I would say especially these last two weeks, uh -huh. I've been off. So the last like I would two read, weeks. Like I would read, but I wouldn't digest. Got that you. Makes sense. Okay, I understand. You know what I mean? Like I would, I would read it the same way I'd read any other book. Versus right. sitting down, being like, "All right, look, what does God have to show to me today?" Right. And actually sitting there with my notebook, just being like, "Oh, this is jumping out at me. Why is it jumping out at me?" And then diving into it further. Right. I totally got you. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. And, you know, I did want to ask you about this because it's a book I'm listening to right now called The Case for Christ. Case for uh, Christ. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. It basically takes a more, I would say it takes a more tangible, tangible approach at proving that Jesus and the New Testament is true. So it's proving that Jesus and the New Testament is true? Yeah. It came from a criminal, I want to say it was a, I think it was a criminal justice reporter. Right. Basically like a criminal criminal analyst report. I don't know what the exact term of it, but that's what he did. He was actually an atheist before when he was starting this investigation. Right. So he so I'm at the part now where he's spoken to um top theological professors that also believe and have done extensive work on the New Testament. Right. And he was speaking with um, a pastor as well as a professor who also debated this thing called the, I think it was called the Council of Jesus. The Council of Jesus. That's, that's different. I never heard yeah. that. 
Yeah, I had never heard of it either. I'd have to look. I'm, there's some of the things that I got to go back and look into into myself. Right. But it it is really interesting. I would say it's for. I would say it's for people who do take that analytical approach to approach to stuff. Right. Because I think that's part of that was part of my struggle coming to Christ was from an analytical aspect. It's like you know if A then B. Right. Yeah, be careful with that because when you and I, I, that's funny you say that because I always told my sister, I'm I, I'm so happy I'm not like a nerd or I'm well, I'm a nerd but I'm happy that I'm not book smart because mm-hmm. a lot of people that are very book smart and read a lot of books, they always have a hard problem with the Bible because they're like, well, they they overthink a lot of right. things, and the point is if you really want your answers you. Go to the source. Trust me, it, it sounds simple, but mm-hmm. that's the easiest way to say. It. Like you're, you could read so much, but if you really want answers, you gotta ask God the answers. Yeah, no, it's true. And one of the things that really stuck out to me uh, so far from the book was from the from the specialist. Again, I'm horrible with names when it comes to comes to this because I gotta go back and listen a couple times. Right. But he said, you know, it's pretty ridiculous of people to especially like the council of jesus who was trying to make jesus into a more naturalist figure right rather than one of a spiritual one or or one or like disprove his miracles and everything like that saying like he was just like a protester or like he was a religious radical right who spoke for feminism and all of this stuff like that that's the picture that this council was trying to paint of jesus of someone who could be more relatable to today Oh, okay. But, yeah, but he's saying like you know it's really short-minded of these individuals to think that way, to think that none of this stuff can happen because if we live in a universe where we were created, where we're the created and talking, why can't you believe that these things could have happened? Right. I mean, if if nothing else proves that these things happened, mm-hmm. isn't it the fact that we don't see this replicated anywhere else? Exactly. And here's here's a funny thing you say that because uh people rather listen to like the news, rather listen to Oh, that'll uh, get you messed up real quick. But they rather listen to uh other books but the Bible. Mm-hmm. They would fight against the Bible, but they read stuff that they they that they got off the internet. The human they right. truth. Yeah. So it's like uh you're saying you believe in this, but you don't believe in the Bible because you feel some type yeah. of way about it and you and like that was that was one of my argument points too they were, it was like yeah it was written 2000 years ago how can we trust it i'm like but and then mm-hmm. it's like but we trust stuff that was written by greeks Ten and romans ago. well but we trust stuff that was written in like bc if we found the bone of lucy and we believe that's the missing link between humans and humans <laughs> and uh, apes exactly like, how can we not believe that this book was that this book is real? Exactly. That the things that are within it are real. And they've even gone to gone as far as proving, I want to say it was Luke. Again, right. I'm still diving deeper into the Bible, but Luke being an accurate historian uh-huh. of the events that took place during that time. Because he named oh places God. that in the 19, I want to say it was like in the 1960s, 1970s, they realized like at first they were thinking, oh, this dude doesn't know what he's talking about. This, some of these places that he's named don't even freaking exist. Right. You know, like, they're like, oh, wait, we dug a little deeper. Okay, this place exists. Oh, wait, we found the name. There were actually two people with this exact same name. Right. Oh, so he's right here. Oh, he's right here. It's like, okay, so if we trust this and we've proven that he's right here and here, mm-hmm. and if we trust history books to tell us that the history is right here and here, why can't we trust the Bible? Exactly. Agreed. It, it don't make sense, but people are scared of the Bible, man, because it's real. It's a, yeah, yeah, because it's basically it's a, life. a logical fallacy. It, it, it's a scary you book. Say you it, believe it this, you but you don't believe that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it's funny because people don't stay away from the Bible because it reads you back. And it's a book that's, it's the only book that's really alive because God's word is the living word. So when you're reading the Bible, his word is real because it's alive. And it's scary to folks when they read it because how true it, it how mm-hmm. true it, it comes mm-hmm. to life. 
So that's why people are scared oh. of the Bible. Or they 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 feel like, oh my God, the Bible. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it, I don't know. And I would just pose this question to people. It's like, just look. Right. It's like it's like it's real easy to write something off without looking into why you're writing it off. Right. Like it, it's real easy to say, I don't believe, I don't want to believe, I don't want to read that. It's like, well, just, uh, you just read just, them, they make your decision. You just broke oh, out. I have no just idea what minute. you just said. Okay. <laughs> no, lightning just, lightning just struck down around me somewhere. Gotcha. But, uh, but yeah, uh, that's, all, that's all I say is like, read it and see you what it is that's truly keeping you from from believing exactly yeah you'll know you'll you'll find out real quick especially if god shows you you might not like it but he'll show oh, you oh yeah the True. the word is a two-edged sword a double-edged mm -hmm. sword and you you get that you're like oh my yeah, heart cut me up real deep <laughs> man i remember when the <laughs> word cut me i said no lord i put it down today <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all hear that thunder? He's to sharpen our swords, though. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. The sword is the word, and you have to sharpen your your sword with the word. So yeah, y'all. You know, I'm glad y'all got on this this uh, Zoom. I I didn't think it would be Same. long today, cause I wasn't expecting it to be long at all. You know, I didn't know who would be on here. I never know who's gonna jump on here. But it's good. I'm, I'm glad that people are, you know, getting the word and, you know, starting to see God for themselves. And I, I see y'all's growth as well. And I, I, I love that. So y'all need to continue to do what y'all are doing as well. And just, you know, I kid you not, I meditate on this scripture every single day and you will see a change in your life immediately. And it's Proverbs Three, one through five. I'm kid, I'm not. I mean, one through seven. I kid you not. Write that down if you have to. Proverbs three, one through seven. I got it read. Mm -hmm. Got it down. I'm a. I'm gonna read it out too, y'all. So y'all, y'all know. I'm because I want y'all to get this like glued in your head. All right, here we go. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add on to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the, the, upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Read that every day. I, I'm telling you, the, that one scripture right there could save you so much heartache. I promise you. <laughs> I, I, man, if I had applied this scripture back then, boy, my life would be so different now. <laughs> man, it is going off out here. Wait, was, were those alarms near you or me? No, that, that's me. Okay. Yeah, they right outside the window or door or whatever. Yeah. And you, it probably sounds amplified because of the mic too, but mm. oh, they are pretty starting with your new mic. I know, man. You know, I have to come up for real, baby. The Lord's blessing me. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's crazy. It's happening all around us, but we stopped getting rain here. Mm, we still, I still got see some. the lightning strikes. It's just drizzling now, but the lightning's still going. Yeah, that lightning's a mess. Well, it's a light show today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and pray us out of here. If y'all want to talk more, let me know. Mm -hmm. Just hit me up if y'all have any questions. Yeah. Or if y'all have topics that y'all want me to pray over and uh, to research and you know do a teaching on, definitely do that. I'm going to be doing a teaching on, what is it, Lord? Astrology next. And I'm going to be exposing astrology. So I, I'm, a, I'm thinking I'm going to do that on YouTube. Yeah, that's a good one. Because that one right mm. there is a dark one. Yeah, that, that one, dude, that one's funny because here in Brazil, 
they got that stuff everywhere. They got signs like, oh, astrology teacher, come here. Mm -hmm. And it's like, just like John was saying, like, people won't even believe the Bible, but they'll believe some lady in her basement telling you about the stars and how they connect this and tell you about your path. And it's like, what? Like, who who the hell is this lady? Like, (laughs) yeah, I, I can't even, I just never got that. I don't know, man. Like, but anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. No, you fine, man. Astrology you... cracks me up. Yeah, and you know people come up to you in horoscopes too is another thing. What's your mm-hmm. sign? Man, uh, I never believed them even when I was that, a kid. That messes with uh, you know. They're too general. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like you say, oh, Aquarius act like this. It's like, like, don't get me wrong. I read them myself and be like, Aquarius act like this. Like, yeah, I do act like that. Wait a minute, I act like a Sagittarius sometimes too. Wait, what is? Y'all lying on here. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 star, the planets lined up today. You got to get a car. What? Mm-hmm. Like, this is stupid. Uh. So, yeah, I'm going to go in on that one. I think I'm going to do a separate teaching on that one. I'm going to just record that one and post it. But, man, no, for real, I'm going to be exposing a lot of things. Please do. Because uh, people are very ignorant. I'm no offense, but ignorant is the word and when you're ignorant you're you have a better chance of getting destroyed by the devil so yeah that's true. <laughs> i'm just saying my, pe- my people are destroyed for, for a lack of knowledge you got that lack of knowledge you're gonna get whipped i have so many <laughs> people, like there's so many people uh, and i want to uh, l- the reason why i'm teaching is because the lord pointed out to me because i see a lot of people on my timeline on you know facebook especially and they, they, you know, they be say, they say, oh, I'm, you know, all about Jesus. Then next thing they talk about astrology or horoscopes. I'm like, what? <laughs> Wait a minute. You either they're all in? You, like, exactly. And then I have mm. another one that says she hey, does. you got to treat them like terror. how your mama treats you. For real. Like, <laughs> either you're going to be in this house or you're going to be out. You ain't going to be coming in and out yeah, my house exactly. like this. <laughs> Choose ye this I day like that who shall serve. <laughs> like, man, I, like, People don't understand you can't be, you can't have one foot in and one foot out, especially nope. with, you know, astrology and uh, um, horoscopes because that gets really demonic. And, I, and I'm going to go into detail on that one because uh, my, I'm not going to talk about nobody, but I'm going to just say somebody I used to deal with used to dabble in that type of stuff. And man, they, that I used to know. It, this demonic activity happens when you <laughs> dabble into that stuff. <laughs> So uh, let me go ahead and pray us out of here. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, this teaching today. If y'all have any questions about it later or if something comes up, let me know. But Father God, we thank you for this teaching today. We thank you for the, the everybody that joined this call. We thank you for what you're about to do this week. We glorify your holy name and your precious son who died on the cross for the, uh, the remissions of our sins, Father God. We lift Jesus Christ's name up when we lift your name up, Heavenly Father. We ask you, Father, this week that you continue to just guide us and continue to mold us and continue to break us down to who you desire us to be. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. You are the alpha, the omega, and the beginning and the end, Father. We ask you that you continue to see and direct our past. Let us be led by the spirit and not by the flesh, and let us not be a free spirit of the world, but a spirit that's just in under your control, Father. We ask that you direct. We want to be your uh, used as vessels for you. We present our bodies as living sacrifice this week to do your will and do what you called us according to do, according to your will and your way and your purpose for our lives. And we thank you for just allowing us to have access to you, Father, through your son, Jesus Christ. And we thank you for just uh, showing us you, you know, your power and, and your, just letting us to taste, get a, just a taste of who you are. And uh, we thank you for the day that you do come to us and that you do judge us and we, you do open, our, open your arms to hug us and say, well done, good and faithful servant. We ask that you keep us in the spirit and not led by the flesh and that you allow us to not get tired. And uh, when we do get tired, allow us not to sin. Allow, uh, keep us from sin. And if we do sin, uh, have us to repent and not feel uh, that we can't be unredeemed, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We thank you. We glorify you. And we lift up your holy and righteous name in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I thank you guys once again. God bless you guys. Thank I will you. see y'all.
next Sunday or Zach, I see you every day on Twitter, so <laughs> Yeah, you see me in there. <laughs> so I'll I'm see you. There. Yeah. And I'll see you anyway tomorrow uh, on the live feed. So that's for sure. Oh, you hitting live tomorrow? Yeah, I'm doing a live stream tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be on. Yeah. So uh, we'll, we'll YouTube we'll or Facebook? Other. Uh YouTube. YouTube? Okay. Yeah. Uh, hold on, let me hop over there real quick. I'll you, be praying for you, you guys. I'm gonna head out. All right, Zach. Take care. God bless, man. You too.